This is the Independence Blue Cross Bull Session, a weekly recap of your 2023 Phillies. Broadcasting live from Chickies and Pete's, tonight's show is brought to you by Team Toyota, BCWSA, Fogo de Show, Independence Blue Cross, and Capital Grill. Now, here are your hosts, Phillies PA announcer Dan Baker and Mickey Morandini. Yes, that Mickey Morandini. <laughs> He's here with us tonight, and we have a special guest, and we're going to introduce him in just a moment. Thank you for joining us. Uh, of course, this is an uh, this show is an add-on. Our last regular season show was last Monday uh, during the Phillies regular season, and we're here at the flagship Chickies and Pete's at 1526 Packer Avenue in South Philadelphia, and my goodness talk about the sports mecca they've got eagle shows going on here we're in the play two section of uh, the uh, largest chickies and peats and uh, I've done a number of events for Pete Shiroki in this room and Pete was just here uh, and uh, we'll talk about him in a moment when when he comes back but we'd like to thank our loyal following who've joined us in person at in the play two section of the flagship chickies and peats at 15th and packer and uh a word about my co-host tonight uh one of our uh loyal listeners viewers mark weissner uh a, a renowned collector was trying to help me determine how many second basemen have, how many major league players have played second base since 1876 when major league baseball started? Now, on the internet, uh, Greg showed me a line that said there have been 1,229. I think that's, that's not right. We, we were trying to do a common sense <laughs> multiplication. <laughs> I think there's got to be at least 5,000. Well, anyway. The reason, Ben, that I wanted to do that is to tell our live audience here at Chickies and Pete's, our radio listening audience over WBCB 1490 AM and uh, 107.3 FM, and this show is also live streamed. And of course, you can hear us anywhere in the world at our website, uh, www.wbcb1490.com. But of all of those second basemen, 5,000, I think it might be 10,000, I don't know. And I'm sorry I couldn't get you an exact number. But Mickey Morandini is among the 20 best defensive second basemen in the history of this great game. Isn't that something? And. Uh, I, it's some, uh, we're, we're really proud of him. Of course, he was a member of the 1993 National League Champions. He made the All-Star team uh, for the Phillies at second base. Uh, he authored an unassisted triple play in Pittsburgh. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> one of the most popular Phillies of all time, number 12, second baseman, Mickey Morandini. <laughs> that doesn't get old. It never gets it old. It doesn't get old. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for oh, that. Oh, you're welcome. Well, you certainly are, Mickey. And I, you know, Ben, I was just saying before you came in, uh, Ben, I don't know if you know this, but uh, you and Mickey are beloved. You're, you're People really like you guys. <laughs> Thank uh, you. <laughs> they, they don't gravitate to everybody. You know, uh, they like their announcers to be honest and forthright, and, and if constructive criticism is needed, you know, and all that. And, and yet, at the same time, it's very obvious in seeing you two talk on the air and exhibit your great baseball knowledge that you're Phillies fans. And uh, Ben, I'm only sorry that I didn't have a chance to introduce you as uh, a <laughs> Phillies catcher. You know, ladies and gentlemen, 
Ben Davis is one of the greatest high school athletes ever to come out of the Philadelphia area and Delaware Valley. <coughs> In fact, I, I mentioned to Ben, Mickey, uh, before the show that um, I, I was thinking earlier today of a Mount Rushmore of Malvern athletes, you see. Okay. So, you know, four people. So I'm thinking, Ben, you and Fran Dunphy got to be two of them. And I would put uh, Fran at the top of that list. And, <laughs> and, and not only what you did at Malvern, but what you've done subsequently in your careers, playing professional baseball, Fran Dunphy coaching three big five basketball teams, uh, Penn, Temple, LaSalle, mm -hmm. and what he, he played on one of the greatest big five basketball teams of all time, the 1969 uh, LaSalle Explorers, 68-69 Explorers with Larry Cannon, Bernie Williams, Ken Durrett, Stan Larchick, Stan Ludarchick, uh, Ed Chesney. Uh, oh, it was a great, they were 23 and one, but they committed a violation that the coach Jim Harding, the previous coach did, Tom Gola coached that team and they weren't allowed to go to the NCAA tournament. Oh, no. And this was in the middle of the great run by the UCLA Bruins and John Wooden. Mm -hmm. A lot of people thought that LaSalle team had a chance to end that. Yeah. But they weren't allowed to yeah. participate you in know, the tournament. You know, Fran Duffy was very instrumental in me getting me in the, the television business. We, we were at a Christmas party at Malvern, and he said, I just retired. He said, what are you going to do? I said, Fran, I have no idea. I never went to college. I, I don't know. And he said, you should go on TV and talk about the Phillies. And I said, really? How am I going to do that? <laughs> and, uh, you know, he was really good friends with Neil Hartman, who was working at Comcast at the yes. time. And literally, Neil called me the next day. We talked for about an hour. He said, I think you do a great job. And he talked to his boss, got me in to do a couple demos. And next thing you know, I was doing pre and post. Yeah. You, know, certainly, cool. you certainly proved him right. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Ben Davis. So who are the other two guys on uh, Malvern's Mount Rushmore? Well, I, I mean, I'd have to put my brother up there. Okay. You know, he was a first-round draft pick of the Dodgers. Um, he went to Vanderbilt out of, out of high school. And then I'd have to put probably Lonnie White, who was a oh, uh, just recently, he just yeah. recently drafted by the Pirates and signed uh, two years ago. So I'd have to put him up there. Lonnie could do everything. He was probably the best pure athlete to come out of, out of Malvern. He was phenomenal, absolutely phenomenal. So he had a football scholarship to go to Penn State. Decided to sign with the Pirates instead. Yeah, I'm trying to think, Ben, um, other Philadelphia area athletes, particularly baseball players, that signed, uh, you know, were, were drafted as high as you were in the, the first. Were you the second pick second overall? Second overall, yes. That's amazing. Yeah. You know. Well, thank you. That has been, there's been, I mean, you look at some of the talent that has come out of this area. I mean, I think. Probably the best pitcher would be Mark Gubazal. Would you agree yeah, with that? Uh, I mean, Gubi had a great career. He has had a Penn right. Charter. Uh, obviously, Mike Piazza, uh, you know, out of Phoenixville High School. Right. There's been a lot of really good, talented people to come out of this area. And I think uh, baseball has really come on strong, and especially in the Delaware Valley. Well, now, uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, you know, one of the things that I try to do with this wonderful Independence Blue Cross Bull session is make sure you're up to speed on our co host and our guests, and we have been lucky enough to have terrific co-hosts and terrific guests. And, uh, you know, to me, I always felt I've been in marketing with college and professional sports, and, you know, if you've got a good product, which we do, and you don't tell people about it, you're wasting it. That's right. You know? Right. right. So, uh, and you could see the way that the, our fans responded yeah. in uh, our discussing uh uh, some of each of your uh, illustrious backgrounds. Now, Mickey Morandini, uh, the Phillies are going to back-to-back -back postseasons now. Last year, we were the last team to get in as the sixth wild card. We won two in St. Louis. Yep. We beat the Braves in the NLDS. We beat the uh, Padres, I almost said the Chargers, good <laughs> grief. And we beat the Padres in <laughs> NLCS and unfortunately fell to yeah. the Astros in the World Series. But uh, 
And here we are again yeah. with a chance. How far can we go this year, Mickey? Well, we can go the whole, we can go the whole way. There's no no doubt about that. Um, we're going to have a tough series here against the Marlins. They got some really good pitching. Uh, they got two lefties they're going to throw against us. I was looking at some of their stats. I think if we can just score some runs, we're going to be fine. Because I looked at some of their team stats. They're near the top in batting average, but they don't walk a lot. And they were last in runs in the National League. It's a weird stat that they they were good in batting average but didn't score a lot of runs. So if we can score some runs, and, and it seems like the Marlins have to put hits together to score runs because they don't hit a lot of home runs either, we should have a good shot to beat them. And, and they're coming into a place that they've never seen anything like it before. This place tomorrow night is going to be going crazy. They got young pitchers on the mind. We'll see how they handle that. But uh, if we can score some runs, I think we've got a good chance to beat them. Ben, I told Mickey, I'm going to do my best to try to get that crowd jacked up tomorrow. I promise you I don't that. think they're going to need a whole lot of <laughs> no, they, don't. they won't need no help. Yeah. No, <laughs> but you're right. They're going to be way, way up. They will but be. But to the extent that I can even increase that or help increase mm -hmm. that, uh, I, will, I will certainly try. Um, you know, it's a shame, Ben, that uh, you didn't have a chance to play for one of the Philadelphia professional the Phillies. Uh, but... Uh, Tell us about, you know, your professional career. And when you, when you think back uh, to your most proud achievements, I, I love it when you, you talk about some of the great teammates you've had over the years. My gosh, uh, how many of us would give our right arm, you know, to have that chance to play with the, a, a Tony Gwynn and a Alex Rodriguez and, and so many others. But w what... Uh, career accomplishments are you most proud of, Ben? Well, I think uh, getting drafted where I got drafted and, you know, eventually getting to the big leagues and with San Diego and playing there for four years and then uh, I was in Seattle for three years and then Chicago for a year and a half and all great cities. Um, but it, it's the funny thing is having never played here in Philly, I know more about the Phillies than any team I ever <laughs> played with, having grown up here and, and, and followed the path and always being a fan. And, um, you know, I, obviously, it's, I played with some great players, as you mentioned. MVPs, Hall of Famers uh, in San Diego alone. I played Ricky Henderson, Tony Gwynn, uh, Ken Caminiti, who was an a, a MVP. And then, obviously, Tony, or, um, uh, Trevor Hoffman as well. So, you know, three Hall of Famers right there. And then Seattle with Edgar Martinez and Brett Boone and Ichiro Suzuki and Mike Cameron. Uh, you know, these guys are perennial all-stars. And, and then Chicago playing with Frank Thomas, and who I think should be in the Hall of Fame, Paul Canerco. Um, just, just got, just meet a lot of great personalities, and I played on in three great cities. Um, but it was just a, a, you know, a feeling of obviously Mickey. We grew up as kids. All we ever want to do is play in the big leagues, and we were fortunately enough to do that. And uh, it's something I never ever took for granted, and something to this day I never take for granted. The things that I'm able to do because of the game, yeah. like doing my job now. I absolutely love my job. I wish I could do every game. To be honest with you. Uh, you know, not having that opportunity kind of stinks, but I would love to do every game. Uh, but it's just baseball has given us so much, and we uh, it's nice to be thankful for it. I'll tell you, the guy sitting in between us is another talent, uh, I think, yet to be tapped. And, of course, Mickey is now an ambassador with the Phillies and does such a great job representing them. But like yourself, very articulate, very knowledgeable, very personable. You know, Ben, you said – that you didn't go to college. But I'm going to tell you something. Your vocabulary is the equal of just about anybody in the broadcast booth in Major League Baseball. Well, thank you. Uh, and so your Malvern teachers did a great <laughs> job. And I'll say even more than that, your parents. Well, well both and, my folks are school teachers, so they had a lot to do with that. So well, thank you. I, you know, people uh, sometimes say to me, uh, well, what courses did you take? How did you advance you know, the level yeah. of public speaking. I said, you want to know the truth? My mom and dad, mm -hmm. they were sticklers for elocution yeah. and make sure that when I spoke with people, I looked them in the eye. And then I pronounced every syllable in a word. And then I spoke in grammatically correct English, yeah. matching <laughs> subjects and verbs and all that <laughs> kind of stuff. It may sound inconsequential, but you can tell in a moment when you meet somebody 
almost what their educational level is right. or what their background yeah. might be. Absolutely. A- and it does go a long way, though. I, th- I will say, though, sometimes when I get excited, my Delco accent comes out. So <laughs> <laughs> that happens. That's okay, too. It happens. Because people love honesty. They, they love, you know, being human and, you know, uh, getting upset from time to time. I, you know, I love Ricky Vitalico on the issue. A lot of, you know, our uh, Phillies that I've had a, ne- a chance, Ben and, and Mickey, to introduce over the years, and it's, it's been such a privilege to introduce all of you, Mickey. Uh, and to see how well they do on the air is really gratifying to me and, uh, and to our fans. Hey, we got a lot more to talk about. Uh, we are going to uh, get into the details about this Phillies Miami series and how far uh, Mickey and Ben think the Phillies can go. But first, we have to pause for a message, according to Chris Ermer, our talented producer, and then we'll be right back. Hi, it's Pete from Chickie and Pete's, and we are prouder than ever to partner with the Philadelphia Eagles. Chickie and Pete's has been named the official sports bar of the Philadelphia Eagles, and we continue to serve as the official caterer of both Eagles training camp and the official caterer of the First Trust Bank Club at Lincoln Financial Field. Go where the players go. The official sports bar of the Philadelphia Eagles, Chickie's Pete's. Millions of Americans are losing their medical assistance or Medicaid coverage. If this affects you, Independence Blue Cross can help. You may be eligible to enroll in a health plan for as little as $0 a month. With Independence Blue Cross, you get the largest provider network in the area, including most Keystone First doctors and hospitals. We also offer free 24-7 telemedicine, coverage for hospital stays and prescriptions. See if you qualify for $0 health insurance and enroll today. Call Independence Blue Cross at 1-844-464-2583 or visit ibx.com slash stay covered. A truly unique dining experience awaits you at Fogo de Show. Fogo de Show awes patrons with their history and tradition of authentic Brazilian steakhouse, offering many cuts of decadent fire-roasted meats prepared over an open fire and served tableside by trained gaucho chefs. Fogo de Show, 1337 Chestnut Street in Center City, Philadelphia. For reservations, go to www.fogo.com or call 215-636-9700. There really is nothing like a home team advantage. That's why Team Toyota is the choice for your next vehicle purchase or service this season. With new Toyota models available for immediate delivery. And over 100 certified used and pre-owned vehicles for any budget. Plus service specials to keep you on the road to victory. Shop or schedule online at teamtoyota.net or choose one of our three locations in Langhorne, Glen Mills, or Princeton. Are you part of the team? If you're looking for a stylish and sophisticated fine dining experience, visit your Eddie V's Prime Seafood Restaurant in near King of Prussia. Eddie V's Seafood features an abundant selection of fine wines and curated cocktails to complement exquisite steaks and seafood made from the highest quality ingredients. In the V Lounge, sip on imaginative handcrafted cocktails with attitude while enjoying signature appetizers. Conveniently located between I-276 and I-76 near the King of Prussia Mall. Call them today, 610-337-7823 to schedule your night out for Eddie V's Prime Seafood. We now return to the Independence Blue Cross Bowl Session. Once again, here are your hosts, Phillies PA announcer Dan Baker and Mickey Morandini. Mickey Morandini. (laughs) And our special guest tonight, Ben Davis, who does uh, such a great job on the air on Comcast on the pre and the post and when he's on the game itself. And... uh, we are, we are really fortunate uh, to have a wonderful play-by-play team. Gosh, gosh, on TV, Tom McCarthy and and Ben and John Cruck and Mike Schmidt on Sundays and on radio, uh, Kevin, uh, Larry Anderson, Kevin Stocker. Boy, we, we really have a talented yeah. group, don't we, Ben? Yeah, You're I, a part of it. <laughs> well, thank you. I, I, think, I think they all do a great job. Obviously, Tom and Scott are, you know, the play-by-play. I think they're as good as they come in, in the business. And I'm not just saying that because I work with them. I just think they're superior. They, they're they so well-prepared, and, uh, you know, they just do a great job of presenting the game to the viewer or the listener. The, I, I couldn't agree with you more. And I, I want to recognize, uh, of course, I'm a public address announcer, but, I have, but thanks to my dear friend Merrill Reese, I've uh, been privileged to do this Independence Blue Cross Bull session 
for the last 17 years with Joe Currican and Greg Luzinski and Mickey Morandini and Tommy Green and Gary Matthews. Um, but in the realm of PA announcing, which uh, I've been with the Phillies for 52 years, 51 as a PA announcer, third most in the history of Major League Baseball. Um, and God, that was cheap, wasn't it? <laughs> Getting a cheap round of applause. <laughs> uh, but what, what I wanted to tell you is that uh, I admired, besides the radio and TV guys, public address announcers going up, growing up, like the great Dave Zinkoff of the Philadelphia Warriors and later the Philadelphia 76ers, uh, Pete Byron with the Philadelphia Phillies, my predecessor at the Eagles, I think you know I did the Philadelphia Eagles public address announcing for 29 years, 1985 through 2013. My predecessor there was Matt Gukas uh, Sr., uh, a great basketball player at St. Joseph's Prep, St. Joseph's University, and a member of the Philadelphia Warriors first NBA championship team. But I bring that up by way of getting to Jake Schwartz. Jake is one of the most talented young public address announcers I have ever met. He has done many uh, high school c basketball classics uh, that are shown on ESPN uh, national television. He has done the PA at the site and a, another uh, young man who used to call me a lot, uh, Jeremy Treatment produces him and does such a fantastic job with his play-by-play -play sports, which is similar to a company that my wife and I had many years ago. Uh, but uh, Jake is now a backup announcer for the Lakewood Blue, Craw Blue Claws, maybe now the, the Jersey Shore Blue Claws, Jake, yes, yes. and uh, also uh, the Lehigh Valley Iron Pigs, where another uh, young man who's extremely talented, Justin Choate, uh, who has called me and uh, is also trying to uh, help Jake and Kevin Linton, the public address voice for the Wilmington Blue Rocks, a terrific young man who does University of Delaware football, University of Delaware men's and women's basketball. And th this guy right here, Jake Schwartz, is... Uh, going to get one of these uh, major PA jobs in the very near future. And he's done many great events around this city, mostly in high school basketball so far, but now is the backup to the Blue Claws and the Iron Pigs. I think he's well on his way to uh, a professional position, but uh, very talented. And he's brought with him tonight his girlfriend, Elizabeth, who is celebrating her birthday. Elizabeth, happy birthday to you. And thank, thank you both for joining us tonight. Roger Hendler is also here, uh, my close, my dear friend, uh, and uh, he's looking forward to the Phillies wild card game tomorrow with Miami. And uh, Roger has been a long time radio announcer uh, in uh, Trenton and Princeton and in Georgia, the mouth of the South. He's with us tonight, too. Now, uh, Mickey and, and Ben, uh, what is the, the likelihood of the Phillies advancing? Mickey? How far are we talking here? Well, uh, you, way? you tell me. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I like their chances. I really do. Um, you know, we got home field advantage against the Marlins. That's a huge advantage for us. Um, we got to get through Atlanta. Um, and that's not going to be an easy thing to do. They led the world in offensive categories this year, and they play very well at home. But uh, we played them. I don't know what their record was against them this year. But they had a winning record, but we played we them played tough. played them pretty tough, yeah. yeah. So I, I like our chances as good as anybody's. You know, it's not always the best. We know this. It's not always the best team that always wins. It's the team that comes in playing well, and I think the Phillies are playing as good as anybody right now. You know, uh, Ben and Mickey, I think of that homestand a couple of weeks ago. We lost two out of three to Miami. We lost three out of four to Atlanta. But every one of those games yeah. was close and could have gone either way. And twice we pushed the Braves into extra innings, mm -hmm. only to lose. Um, so I don't think we're intimidated by that. Yeah. I don't think Miami's intimidated by us. But 
They might be in for something that they're not accustomed yeah. to tomorrow, Ben Davis. Yeah, they're they're you know, they I know they won the season series. They won seven out of thirteen games uh, against the Phillies. But it wasn't in this environment. This is a whole different animal and you got to playoffs you wipe the slate clean. That's the bottom line. And uh, they do have some weapons, obviously, with uh, you know, Luzardo and Garrett to start games uh, one and two are lefties who pitched four times against the Phillies this year and were 4 0. But um, Luzardo is going to be the, the tougher task tomorrow night. And uh, I think if the Phillies can get to him, I think some of the right handed hitters have to come up big in this series uh, with Cassianos and Bohm and, and JT Romuto. Uh, I think if they do that, I think they win. And I, the bullpen's been throwing a lot better. First of all, they're very well rested. Yes. Very well rested. I think tomorrow uh, you have to win with Zach Wheeler on the mound. Well, Zach Wheeler, Ben, uh, and Mickey, uh, my goodness, uh, look what he's done since the Phillies signed him. And you have to give John Middleton, Matt Klintak, mm-hmm. Dave Dombrowski, Zach Wheeler, uh, Bryce Harper, JT Real Muto. That's a pretty good nucleus. And now, uh, to me, Ben, what's really encouraging is what Dave Dombrowski is doing in the farm. And, and Sam Fold, general manager, Ned Rice, uh, Jorge Valandia, uh, Preston Mattingly. I mean, it seems like we're getting people from the minor league system, which for a decade or so, it seems like we they weren't sending anybody up. Yeah, that was a dry well for a long time, and it's definitely something that they wanted to address. They are addressing it, and you're starting to see the fruits of their labor. Look at Orion Kirkering, who came up yeah. this year. I mean, he was drafted 14 months ago, for crying out loud. Uh, you're just starting to see a lot of these guys come up and not just make it to the big leagues like Boehm and Stott. Uh, you're seeing them have success at the big league level, and that's, that's one thing to just get there. Well, that's great. Way to go. But if you don't have that sustained success, it doesn't really matter. Uh, but uh, it's, it is a – you know, they made it a, and they're going after character guys, too. That's what I think is great. You look at up and down this, this big league roster. These are all guys with high character, and they, they take a lot of pride in their craft. They take a lot of pride in each other and their preparation, and I think it shows on the field. I think that's why the city relates to this team so well, because of their preparation. They're accountable, and they work hard. And they don't like when they lose. And I think that's – they don't care if they're playing the Marlins tomorrow or they're playing the 27 Yankees. They're going to attack them with the same mindset uh, in, in each game. You know, uh, Ben, uh, when you say that, it reminds me of number 12's 1993 National League champions. Uh, and uh, I love Harry Callis' portrayal of them. But, man, they just came out. It seemed like every time you looked up, the bases were loaded. Mm -hmm. They had four guys with 100 walks on that team. And, uh, uh, Mickey, uh, it was apparent you guys loved to play baseball. And, uh, my goodness, you were relentless. And in that respect, this team reminds me of yours. They do. It is. I mean, we had a lot of fun. I don't know if we had as much fun as this team shows it, you know, but we had a lot of fun together. We loved each other. We were a tight-knit group. Um, now, this team this this team now, they, they had a lot more power than we had. I mean, we had guys that could hit home runs, but I think our leading guy was 22 or 23 home runs. Um, but, you know, we, we got on – we led the league in runs. We led the league in on-base percentage. As you said, walks. We knew how to play the game. We caught the baseball. We had a great starting staff, you know, great bullpen. Um, so, yeah, it's a lot lot similar to, the, to these guys. You have to build within, as Ben said. You have to have a good nucleus of young players. Then you can go out, sign your free agents to fill in the gaps that you need, and the Phillies have done a perfect job of doing that. Yeah, I think the correlation between the 93 team and this team is their baseball IQ. They had a bunch of baseball players who knew when to take the extra base. They knew what base they were going to because they were always thinking ahead always. And I think that's where the, the professionalism on both ends, on both teams, I think really kind of shines through. And speaking of young players, Ben, as Mickey did, tell us your thoughts about Johan Rojas. I'll be honest with you, Dan. I, we always heard about all his defensive prowess, and it is off the charts. I didn't think he was – I mean, he finished over 300. I didn't think he would yeah. hit as well as he has. Um, so it's been a – It's been a. you're going to see him in center field tomorrow night. And that's the bottom line. He's earned that spot. He's been productive. And there's a reason why why Kyle Schwarber has had the year he has had because ever since Rojas got here, he's been getting on base. There's no place to put Kyle Schwarber. 
And there's the bottom of that lineup has produced, so has Kyle Swerver knocking these guys in. So it's been – he's been great. He's been a godsend. Boy, oh, boy. Uh, can you sense the optimism among our <laughs> fans, uh, among our former players, uh, among our broadcasters? And now we're halfway through tonight's edition of the Independence Blue Cross Bull Session. We'll be back with the second half, everybody. Don't go away. We'll be right back. Hi, it's Pete from Chickie and Pete's, and we are prouder than ever to partner with the Philadelphia Eagles. Chickie and Pete's has been named the official sports bar of the Philadelphia Eagles, and we continue to serve as the official caterer of both Eagles training camp and the official caterer of the First Trust Bank Club at Lincoln Financial Field. Go where the players go. The official sports bar of the Philadelphia Eagles, Chickie's Pete's. I'm always striving to live my healthiest life, so I need a health plan that has my back. With Independence Blue Cross, I get access to the largest network of doctors and hospitals in the region and free virtual doctor visits 24-7. Plus, with premiums as low as $0 per month, I can stay on top of my health and keep my budget in check. Independence has given me coverage I can count on, and they'll do the same for you. Explore your coverage options and enroll today at ibx.com. A truly unique dining experience awaits you at Fogo de Show. Fogo de Show awes patrons with their history and tradition of authentic Brazilian steakhouse, offering many cuts of decadent fire-roasted meats prepared over an open fire and served tableside by trained gaucho chefs. Fogo de Show, 1337 Chestnut Street in Center City, Philadelphia. For reservations, go to www.fogo.com or call 215-636-9700. There really is nothing like a home team advantage. That's why Team Toyota is the choice for your next vehicle purchase or service this season. With new Toyota models available for immediate delivery. And over 100 certified used and pre-owned vehicles for any budget. Plus service specials to keep you on the road to victory. Shop or schedule online at teamtoyota.net or choose one of our three locations in Langhorne, Glen Mills, or Princeton. Are you part of the team? If you're looking for a stylish and sophisticated fine dining experience, visit your Eddie V's Prime Seafood Restaurant in near King of Prussia. Eddie V's Seafood features an abundant selection of fine wines and curated cocktails to complement exquisite steaks and seafood made from the highest quality ingredients. In the V Lounge, sip on imaginative handcrafted cocktails with attitude while enjoying signature appetizers. Conveniently located between I-276 and I-76 near the King of Prussia Mall. Call them today, 610-337-7823 to schedule your night out for Eddie V's Prime Prime Seafood. We now return to the Independence Blue Cross Bull Session. Once again, here are your hosts, Phillies PA announcer Dan Baker and Mickey Morandini. Welcome back, everybody. Thank you. With Mickey and me tonight, Ben Davis, one of the greatest high school athletes ever to come out of the Philadelphia area. Got second pick overall in the Major League Baseball draft. Can you imagine? To uh, see him hit a golf ball. Is that Bryce Harper oh. was the number one, right? He's number one he overall. number one yeah. overall. I mean, <laughs> look at look at the uh, level of talent that, that uh, comes with being drafted that high and how highly regarded one must be. Well, uh, Ben and Mickey, our producer Chris Ermer wanted me to ask the both of you uh, how you compare the playoffs in Major League Baseball with that of other sports like the National Football League, the National Basketball Association, or the NHL? Mickey? <laughs> um, it's hard to compare, I think, but, uh, you know, it's a long haul for all the sports. You have to win, you know, in Baseball, hockey, and basketball, you got to win, I think, four series. Um, football, you know, you got to win three games to get the Super Bowl. Um, it's difficult, and it's really difficult to repeat. We know that there's not too many teams in any sports that repeat. So um, that's a hard question. I, I've never really been, I'm going to be honest, I've never really been to a hockey playoff game or a NFL playoff game. So I don't know how the crowd simulates, but I know. In baseball at, at CBP, there can't be too many other venues that are louder than there can yeah. be. I'd say it probably compares most to hockey because 
you know, the, the effort level, I think, is there. Um, I, and no offense to basketball, I just don't see, don't see it there. Uh, and with football, you play one game a week. And I know these guys take a beating. I'm not <laughs> taking anything away from that. But it's just it's more of a grind, I think, with baseball and hockey. Well, you mentioned basketball, Ben Davis. Mm -hmm. Isn't it true that both you and Mickey Morandini were like all-conference basketball players besides baseball? Mickey? I was. I was, uh, I was good for, you know, my size, and I could shoot, and I led my high school in points scored in a career. I still hold that record. So Whoa, wow. That was right goodness. before three-pointers, too. Really? It came in the following year. But We yeah. have to order something else here <laughs> for, for this guy. What was the final tally? I had about, I think it was 1,760 Holy points mackerel. or something like that. Yeah. Before the three. Yeah, it was right before the three. Ooh. Good Lord. So, yeah, it was all right. Well, this guy did too. <laughs> Tell us about your oh. basketball career. We all know about yeah. baseball. My senior year, I was I was MVP of the Interact in, in basketball. We had a great league. Um, it was probably, probably the highlight of my basketball career was playing against Kobe for three years. So, he was obviously unbelievable. Did you guard him? I did not guard. Defense wasn't my forte. <laughs> <laughs> I like to light it up. Um <laughs> No, he was. It, it was something to watch him, you know, kind of progress. You think it was a freshman? He's starting. He's doing great. Well, he, he, you know, he's doing great for being a freshman. Sophomore year, thinking, oh, this kid's going D one. Junior year, when I was a senior, thinking, oh, this kid's going to a big D one like Duke or UNC. And then he was out um, his senior year. I, that was my first year playing ball. I came back and went to a bunch of the games. And his progression from his junior year to senior. I mean, they were throwing alley oops from half court. He just went to a whole different level. And then, obviously, what he did in the NBA was one of the best players of all time. Yeah, yeah. It was fun playing against him. But is, did you guys know about the basketball background of these two great athletes? I mean, uh, I think that's pretty interesting. And uh, Mark Weissner had a, a, a question uh, for both of you as well, Mickey and Ben Davis. And that is, uh, which athletes did you emulate as boys uh, like, who were your heroes growing up, and was there anybody in particular that you patterned yourselves after, Mickey? Well, I grew up in the Pittsburgh area, so when I was really young, I grew up with the Pittsburgh Pirates because I'm from Pittsburgh, so I was a big Al Oliver fan. Uh, he played here in Philadelphia one year. His name was Scoops, and man, could he hit. Left-handed hitter. I, I know Larry Bo told me he hit more line drives than anybody ever seen. So I kind of followed him throughout his career. As I got a little bit older, I, I followed Ozzie Smith. I was a shortstop growing up, so Ozzie Smith was kind of someone I kind of emulated a little bit when I was young. Uh, from the basketball side, I've always been a Magic Johnson fan. So he's on my bucket list. I want to meet Magic Johnson one day. So I think those guys are probably the ones I grew up uh, rooting for and, and, and watching. Do you like that HBO series about the Lakers? Oh, yeah. 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 I it's love the one where it's the Celtics and the Lakers. Mm -hmm. I, I don't remember what it was called, yeah. but it was awesome, yeah. Well, you know, there's a, a Philadelphia flavor in there talking about Paul Westhead, former LaSalle coach, former St. Joe player, uh, Jack McKinney, yeah. a former St. Joe player mm -hmm. and St. Joe's head coach. Uh, ben, how about you? Uh, was there uh, anybody in particular that it was your – the sports hero growing up? Well, obviously being a catcher, no offense to Mick, but that was my team growing up, the 93 team, but Darren Dalton. He was, you know, he was my guy. And he was, I, I tried to catch like him. I tried to throw the ball back to the pitcher. He had that little pause in the back, and then he'd throw it back oh, to the yeah. pitcher. Uh, I, I wanted to be Dutch. And, um, you know, he was, he was always my guy. And he was just, I mean, he was the heart and soul of that ball club. And he was, you know, from what I understand, he was the guy that really handled the press and, <laughs> he did. and everything. He handled he was, everything. Yeah. So um, he was just a, a, a tremendous man, tremendous human being, and yep. obviously missed every day. Uh, Harry Callis has told me and Dave Dombrowski has told me uh, seldom has there been a leader as a player in the clubhouse like Darren Dalton. Yeah. You know, Dave Dombrowski compares Kyle Schwerber to Darren Dalton. Bit. Wow. You know, with his leadership skills and how he handles the clubhouse and things along those lines. Yeah. Dave, uh, it's ironic we're playing the Marlins. Dave was the GM at the Marlins 97. who acquired Darren Dalton in 1997. Yep. And he told Greg Luzinski and I on this air, on the uh, Bull session, uh, how Darren came in and just took over the club. I wouldn't doubt it. And, uh, and he told him he didn't want any BS. Go out there and play hard, and 
<laughs> yeah. We, you know, that's another thing about that '93 team. You had somebody like Dave Hollins. You didn't, you certainly didn't want to get him angry. No. I saw him get hit with so many pitches. He never flinched. Sometimes. <laughs> If, if you were built like him, I wouldn't yeah. flinch either. But that was another thing that this team this year is compared to us. Teams did not want to come into Philadelphia and play us. They just didn't. And, uh, you know, I can speak for playing in front of 50,000 screaming Philly fans. It's, it's pretty incredible. It's really incredible. And it's going to start getting incredible, folks, tomorrow night. Yeah, it's going to be a at, beautiful night. At yeah. 8 o'clock. And then Wednesday night at 8 o'clock. If a third game is necessary, it's Thursday night at 8. But uh, They said uh, that time could actually yeah, it could vary. Change it could change oh, on Thursday, right? depending on, on the other you know, if games couple series only If a couple series only go two games, I think we might get bumped up to a different time. Yeah. Okay. We'll see. Well, you know what, though? I mean, we're already in the prime time. Yeah. You know, so that tells you something about the high regard that network television and uh, national media think of – the Phillies. Absolutely. And I don't think there's any West Coast teams in it right now. They're all on buys. The right. So I think everything is – Arizona. Yeah. You know, at uh, – They're at Milwaukee, though, right? Yeah. yeah. I don't think that's going to be a primetime game. No. I mean, no offense to those teams. No. But people want to watch Bryce Harper, right. Trey Turner, you know. So yep. they're, they're going to get what they want. Chris, how are we doing there? Is it time for our third commercial break? Oh, three minutes. Three minutes. Okay. That, that That's okay. We're here. Uh is there anybody, uh, Ben, that you could see emerging in the playoffs, and uh, uh, you know, a, a particular individual uh, that could have an impact? I, I think Alec Bohm's going to have a big series. I think uh, I think the game yesterday. I know the game yesterday didn't mean anything, but Alec Bohm had a big game. Bryson Stott had a big game. Brandon Marsh had a big game, and I just think that that Bohm. I think he's the purest hitter of them all. Um, I think he's one of the most pure hitters. In, on the Phillies ball club. I just think he's poised to, especially with all the lefties, to, to have some big numbers against the Marlins. I, I, I don't think – I think this year has given him a lot. He finished with 97 RBIs and 20 home runs. How about the Phillies had six players, first time it's ever been done in the history of, of the Phillies, six players with 20-plus home runs. That's remarkable. I was so happy, Ben, to see Alec get that 20th I know. yesterday. Yeah. I know. And to see the Phillies as a team get our 90th win. Yeah. I think that's only happened – 15 or 16 times in our 141 year history. It's only happened seven times since 1980. So this was the seventh yeah. time it's happened since 1980. That's. Mickey, uh, how about you? I want to see JT have a oh. tremendous series because he was a Marlin, right? He got traded oh. here. I'd love to see him, you know, beat up on his old team. I think that would be a beautiful thing. That's, yeah, that would be great. You might say it. Yeah. He's looking good, a lot better. He's getting yeah. that foot down. He's, he's looking good. Now, uh, a, a guy who has been a little bit up and down this year is number 27, Aaron Nola. Uh, he can c- come out with a fantastic game or he can have one of those five-run innings, and it, it seems very un-Aaron Nola-like. What's going on with Aaron, Mickey, and and? How do you see him performing this postseason? Well, he's pitched good his last few outings, mm-hmm. which is really encouraging. He just he has that one bad inning, and he can't get out of it without you know some runs scoring. But he, he just got to keep the ball down. This this Miami Marlins team does not hit a lot of home runs. Um, they have to beat you with base hits and doubles and things like that. So if he can just keep the ball down, establish that fastball. We know he's got the great breaking ball. Maybe use this a little bit more. Mm-hmm. He's got a good changeup, and it seems like he tends to go away from it at times. But if he can get the changeup working, and you know, if he's got all three pitches working, he's almost unhittable. Yeah. Last time you mentioned his last couple of starts, he has used that changeup a lot more. He's used his two seam fastball a lot more. He's having more success. I just think throughout the course of this year, he relied so heavily on that breaking ball, and guys are yeah. just up there looking for it. And you get a hanger, you know how far right. they go. So um, I, I still – he's still going to use it because it's a, it's a plus pitch for him. But I think he has incorporated that change up, and he's thrown it the change up more to righties as well, so giving them something else to think about. You know, you were mentioning that uh, we're going to fa- face a rough customer in Jesus Lozardo. Mm-hmm. My goodness, he's – Thank goodness they don't have Sandy Alcantara. Right. In my I almost <laughs> wish he was healthy. Because <laughs> he didn't pitch good this year. He, he, oh. Especially but, uh, against the Phillies. Yeah. Phillies got to him. Yeah. But uh, 
as good as Lizardo can be, I think Wheeler can be even better, Ben. I, I always, I, I'd never put anything past Zach Wheeler. His dominance, uh, he seems to take it to a whole different level, which yeah. you don't think that is possible. But, yeah, he's, he's as good as it gets in the league. And he's rested. He's going to have some lymph on that baby tomorrow. Oh, thank yeah. goodness. From your lips to God's ears here. <laughs> We have one more segment of tonight's Independence Blue Cross Bull Session featuring Mickey Morandini and Ben Davis. Don't go away. We'll be right back. Hi, it's Pete from Chickie and Pete's, and we are prouder than ever to partner with the Philadelphia Eagles. Chickie and Pete's has been named the official sports bar of the Philadelphia Eagles, and we continue to serve as the official caterer of both Eagles training camp and the official caterer of the First Trust Bank Club at Lincoln Financial Field. Go where the players go. The official sports bar of the Philadelphia Eagles, Chickies Beats. Millions of Americans are losing their medical assistance or Medicaid coverage. If this affects you, Independence Blue Cross can help. You may be eligible to enroll in a health plan for as little as $0 a month. With Independence Blue Cross, you get the largest provider network in the area, including most Keystone First doctors and hospitals. We also offer free 24-7 telemedicine, coverage for hospital stays and prescriptions. See if you qualify for $0 health insurance and enroll today. Call Independence Blue Cross at 1-844-464-2583 or visit ibx.com slash stay covered. A truly unique dining experience awaits you at Fogo de Show. Fogo de Show awes patrons with their history and tradition of authentic Brazilian steakhouse, offering many cuts of decadent fire-roasted meats prepared over an open fire and served tableside by trained gaucho chefs. Fogo de Show, 1337 Chestnut Street in Center City, Philadelphia. For reservations, go to www.fogo.com or call 215-636-9700. I sept the Philly. I sept the Philly. I sept the Philly. I ride the Broad Street line. Do you know how expensive parking is? I do not have time to deal with traffic because it's better for the environment. I ride SEPTA all the time. Monday through Friday and whenever game day is. I'm out the door and at my stop by 7.30. I catch up on work when I ride. I check Twitter, I text my buddies. I watch sports highlights or lowlights. For real Philly fans, SEPTA is the hometown way to go. Ride with us at iSEPTAPhilly.com. If you are looking for a stylish and sophisticated fine dining experience, visit your Eddie V's Prime Seafood Restaurant in near King of Prussia. Eddie V's Seafood features an abundant selection of fine wines and curated cocktails to complement exquisite steaks and seafood made from the highest quality ingredients. In the V Lounge, sip on imaginative handcrafted cocktails with attitude while enjoying signature appetizers. Conveniently located between I-276 and I-76 near the King of Prussia Mall. Call them today, 610-337-7823 to schedule your night out for Eddie V's Prime Seafood. We now return to the Independence Blue Cross Bull Session. Once again, here are your hosts, Phillies PA announcer Dan Baker and Mickey Morandini. Ben Davis is the special guest tonight. And uh, Ben, of course, a former big league catcher and now a terrific analyst and pre- and post-game host on Comcast. Uh, Mickey Morandini, one of the best defensive second basemen in the history of Major League Baseball. Boy, that's that's saying a lot. Um, what other second baseman, Mickey, impressed you most with their defense? Ryan Sandberg was really good, and he could always throw that little one hopper when he made a play up the middle. He was really good at it. So yeah, I, I followed Ryan a lot. Uh, uh, he was special there at second base. Um, Biggio was good. Um, Brett Boone was good. Um, there were a bunch of really good second basemen when I was playing. Fernando Vina was good. Um, so, yeah, those guys were, were special. Jose Lind, he was really good defensively mm-hmm. for the Pirates. Didn't he change his name to Chico? Chico Lind, yeah, <laughs> I think so. Most talented teammate you ever played with? Sammy Sosa. I mean, he was—he could do it all. Uh, he, as as his career, he started hitting all those home runs. He kind of let his defense, you know, play second fiddle. But he, when he was young, he could throw, he could field, mm-hmm. he could steal bases, he could do it all. He could hit for average. Obviously, he could hit the long ball. So he was one of the more gifted players I ever played with. Ben, you mentioned a couple of the great players that you played with. If you had to pick just one, mm. my goodness, uh, it would might be hard to do but was there one that 
clearly was the best you ever played with? Yeah, I'd say Tony, Tony Gwynn. I mean, he had eight batting titles, and um, he was just he was just special. You know, his last year, it was my last year in 2001. It was his last year playing. It was my last year in San Diego. He came out of the physical. At 41 years old, he still had 2010 eyesight oh at 41 goodness. years old. And, uh, you know, he was – but I, I very close second is Ichiro Suzuki. He was phenomenal. Ichiro could go 0 for 4 in a game, and I'd still drop my jaw at two things he did in a game. He was phenomenal, just just phenomenal. He was uh, – and a great teammate, great teammate. It, it's just got to be wonderful to have – you know, most of us uh, – uh, who, uh, gosh, everybody's played sports growing up, and it used to be just boys, and of course now it's girls and boys. But those who can rise to the level of uh, a professional athlete in any of the sports, I think it's less than 1% of 1% <laughs> of the total male population yeah. that would ever make it. Uh, you know, to Major League Baseball or the National Football League or National Hockey League or National Basketball Association. And uh, the experiences that you must have. And, and let, let me ask you about this. Manager, best manager you ever had, and why would you pick that person? What were their credentials? I'm, I'm going to say Jim Fergosi. I mean – and I have a special place because he's the one that called me up in my first big league game. And But he was just – he motivated you without putting you down. I mean, he motivated you, told you what he needed from you. Uh, he was up front with you. Um, he was just a special guy, a really good manager, a player's manager. Um, and if you needed a good kick in the butt, he'd give you a good kick in the butt, and I appreciated that. Ben, uh, how about yourself? Uh, I'd say Bruce Bochy. Uh, he was, um, you know, now he's managing the Texas Rangers and they're in the playoffs as well. But you always knew where you stood with Boach. He would tell you if you did something good so you could stay in the lineup, if you did something bad while your name wasn't in the lineup the next day. And I think that's, it was, he handled the bullpen as, as well as anybody I've ever seen. Uh, there's a reason he will be first ballot Hall of Famer. Um, you know, this, he will be in Cooperstown one day. He's got three World Series titles yeah. with, uh, with the Giants. And he was just, uh, like I said, you always knew where you stood with him. He was honest. And he didn't say one thing and do something else, which you know, I've had managers do, and it's not fun. I have to. Yep. This year, of course, in Texas, the Rangers have had mostly a good year. They're in the playoffs, but it looked like they were going to have the, the number one position mm -hmm. in the AL West. And, and now they're at Tampa, yeah. I think. That's, that's not going to be an easy no, an Houston easy sign. snuck in there again. Yeah. And they, you know, Houston played the Diamondbacks yesterday, and Houston or Diamondbacks had clinched the night before. So the Diamondbacks played basically their B team, and you know, they the Astros won, the Rangers lost. Next thing you know, it's flip flop. Yeah. It's game over. They had, they had a tiebreaker. Here's a question for you. Uh, you know, uh, I was thinking that uh, maybe the the Arizona is a team that we don't want to face in the postseason uh, because. Uh, 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 with the, their top two pitchers, uh, Zach Gallen from uh, Bishop Eustis right here in the Delaware Valley, mm -hmm. uh, and Merrill Kelly. Uh, so uh, next question, uh, Ben, uh, who would you rather face? Who do you think the Phillies have a better chance of beating, uh, Jesus Lazardo uh, or Zach Gallen? Well, Zach Gallen has had very good numbers against the Phillies. But, I, you know, I'd still – would have rather faced the Diamondbacks. Now, having said that, I still think the Phillies take care of the, the fish. So, um, you know, if you get Zach Allen on the, on the right day, he can really go ahead and, and shove. So um, I, I'll take their chances with Lizardo. I think, I think some of these younger guys for the fish are going to be definitely walking on eggshells when they see this crowd tomorrow night. And maybe they'll be too amped up. You start to walk a couple guys. Next thing you know, you got a three-run homer. So it definitely could happen. I think that both of you uh, have uh, made that point. Uh, and Mickey, you were saying that earlier <laughs> about how intimidating you think this crowd could be. And even though Miami has had some success in Philadelphia this year, they were here for two three-game series and one two out of three in each, uh, even though the games were all very competitive. Uh, but you made the point, Mickey, that 
while they won those two regular season series, yeah. they've yet to face a crowd like they're going to encounter tomorrow night. It's a night. different animal in the playoffs here. It's just different. Um, everybody's going to have the rally towels. There's going to be 45,000 screaming Philly fans. Um, I'm sure the players have been told by the coaches that, hey, you know, you're coming into a hostile environment. You guys better be ready. So hopefully they're putting a lot of emphasis on that and it'll get in their heads a little bit. But a young kid coming in here in a playoff game, it's not. it usually doesn't turn out very well. Especially if they have the I'll show you mentality. That's not going to work here. <laughs> I'll show you how good I am, and I'll show you that you you don't affect me. Uh, that could be the worst thing for for Marlin player, but um, you know we'll see what happens. I remember being over there last year, and I remember sitting up in the radio booth, and I, I thought the I thought the whole f- place was going <laughs> to fall down. It was shaking so much. I'm like, this, there's no way the stadium can withstand this kind of uh, noise. Uh, it was it was just a unbelievable. I've never experienced. I had goosebumps for innings on end. That's, it was incredible. Mickey and Ben, how about the Phillies baseball fans this year uh, with a, a struggling Trey Turner and the way they supported him? And, man, he really took off with that kind of encouragement. Yeah, it was awesome. Um, it, you know, a lot of people didn't like the fans doing that. They thought he should be booed the way he was playing. But he really turned it around. He's a key part of this team. He can hit for power. He can steal bases. He can hit for average. He can do it all on the offensive side. And really, we really started taking off when Trey Turner took off. He's a dynamic player, and he can beat you in a myriad of ways, that's for sure. So if he can continue to stay hot, then I I like to fill his chances offensively, obviously. Does uh, Ben, does Taiwan Walker have a role in this series or subsequent (coughs) postseason series i don't know about this series but i think he's going to have to play a role at some point um i just don't know if they're going to need him uh pitching with just being best of three so we'll see maybe they, they choose obviously to go with a bat instead of uh instead of Ty, taiwan but uh you know, we'll see we Mick, shall see mickey do you feel that uh, the bullpen uh, uh which is deep and and has some all-stars there and potential hall of famers um but there has been some inconsistency yeah. this year. It looks like they're well rested, as Ben said earlier, and primed uh, for postseason play. Uh, how do you f- feel they are at this point? I think they're going to be great. I think the biggest issue was just some overuse there. I mean, mm-hmm. they, they threw a ton of innings this year. Um, and I think these last four or five days, you know, they got an inning here, inning there. They're going to be well rested, and I expect our bullpen to pitch very well in this series. Ladies and gentlemen, that concludes tonight's edition of the Independence Blue Cross Bowl Session. Have a nice round of applause for Mickey Morandini and Ben Davis. And if the Phillies beat the Marlins, we'll see you back here next week. At, at play two at Chickies and Pete's as we extend the Bull Session radio show along with the Phillies baseball season. Good night, everybody. Thanks for coming. You've been listening to the Independence Blue Cross Bull Session. Tonight's show is an exclusive presentation of 1490.